Ah, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. He's going straight under that damn boat, man. Oh yeah. All right, rocking that fresh Lakers edition Naughty Pleasures gear this morning. And um, it's gonna be about 40 degrees here. Yeah. It's gonna be a high tide. It's gonna be the worst tide for me to get down on the Sambo. But I'm gonna give it a go for a few hours anyway. Hopefully come up with something because the sunrise looks spectacular. I'm gonna get some bread, just in case we get some live rooms we made up this morning. Right, let's try round two of getting some bloody bread. First serve, I didn't have it. Hoping to get back down this spot this morning before the tide was up too high, but we might have just missed it. That's already all underwater. The point we might keep dry, and we're going to go back to the guy me above. Right, naughty Jade, naughty pleasures. We've um, got down here a tiny little bit late this morning. I would have had to get down here at about two in the morning to get the low tide coming in. Tide's been pumping in for a couple of hours now. We're going to go down to the guy mere barbs instead of hitting this normal spot. And we'll see if we can get some live bait down there. We'll chuck in some fresh baits as always. And mix up the spots for a change, you know. We come down here a lot. I love it. I can't stop. This is one of my faves. But we'll go hit the barbs this morning for a couple of hours before the sun gets too hot. By the look of it, it's going to be a very, very hot day. So it's already 20-something degrees in the morning. So let's go hit the bars quick, get a couple of baits out, and then try and get some live bait out there. See down there. Went to two petrol stations this morning just to find some bread. This is the stuff that was there. High fibre toast oak. Disgust me. I don't trust it. Get the in it. There's bloody millions of blokes down here this morning. <laughs> I might only be down here for a little bit then. Naughty Jade, naughty pleasures. Back down at the spot one more time today. Beautiful little morning. I've only got about three hours down here to fish as the wind is going to be picking up something crazy at about 11 o'clock. So I've still got bitter feelings about that giant shark I lost down here and it keeps keeps fueling me to come back. So um, let's just get into it. Let's get down there, catch something. One last thing too. We're going to be walking through a bit of a high tide at the moment still, so the water's going to be up over that sandbar, but she's going to be dropping down. So hopefully, while that water's running, 
there's a few things stirring around trying to get out past that uh, dog leg in the river here we like fishing so I hope we get something good man because I'm super pumped again what a difference a few hours of tide makes down here that normally exposed sandbar is still pretty covered with water something's swimming down there not a bloody shark is it I'm going down there. Let's go check it Made out. Made it back down the spot. And we are on the most solitary little bit of uh, land left up here in the sandbar. Bought some smaller poles in for the meantime, just so I can rig up in peace without worrying about the rods falling in the salt water. It's only a matter of time before we're on to the next monster. There's only so many days you can catch bait in a row. In a row. You know what I mean? Uh, also going to be testing out to another uh, field camera stand. It's a big one I picked up the other week. Very smooth, very uh, manoeuvrable. I'll show you how this works in a second. Who makes this thing? This is by Joby. So this can hold either your camera phone or, um, you know, if you've got a specialist camera, you get a different attachment for the top. And then you can put your uh, very plush, fancy camera on there. But uh, yeah, I'll give this a little crack, see how it works out. And this will come in handy just for filming. Nice and steady. And look at that. It's like, got some beautiful uh, maneuverability to it. So very smooth. I'm not gonna put this one out in the water. We're gonna keep this for the dry land specialist. That's what we're looking at. So enjoy that. All I rig up. I'm gonna keep a couple of these on me because they're gonna hold the esky out in the water. Might as well go put these out in the water first, eh? So. Specifically for that reason, because the tide gets so high over the sandbar, if I don't want to close myself out of any good fish, possible fishing sessions, I need to make these rod holders at least 1.5 metres long. So that allows enough rod holder to be out of the water. Even when the boats come by, that wash isn't going to go up into my reels or anything like that. a little bit deeper than we first thought, eh? Just up over the moose. It's pretty close. These things are ready to peel off from the pack. We'll get them on a... take these rods straight out and put them out. Just saw some massive whiting out there on the sandbar. If I had the yabby pump, they would have been prime time uh, ready to catch down here. Got those three fresh baits ready to go. Let's start them off with that. Then we'll go get some livey.
way. We couldn't catch any more bait. We're only catching small brim. So, the next one. First things first, I've got to go and get some. Uh, we're getting some burly for the burly trap before I go and buy it. So, I'm going to let you in on a little sneaky tip. One of the boys told me, and it worked pretty good last time. I'm gonna get some biscuits too. Sat in and boom. A little bit dear, you can always go with a bit of no name, but whiskers are wet. Yeah. This is the magic. That sandwich bread. That catches our live mullet. The mighty. I'm only going to buy a bait, burly bucket. I must promise myself not to spend any more money. I can't promise that. Where are these burly buckets? Here we go. Right. Looks like a new little bait storage box. And we've got the smallest burly pot made by Primal. They're calling it a large, I'm calling it a small. This has got a lead weighted bottom on it, so it should stay in the current pretty easy. The only thing I'm worried about is this latch. It could be a bit easy to uh, come undone, but it's still an easy way to load the thing. Anyway, that'll do us. Right, that's gonna do us, we've got our goods. Let's get out of here. If you've never been to a beast house before, in Australia, we got lots of these places, man. And they, uh, they're quite well stocked. We've got our burly bucket. Our bread. Nice can of Fulon line cuisine. Some biscuits. No frills, gold, all that'll work in it as well. This is all the uh, biscuits I had at this place, so I paid a little bit more for them, but shouldn't make a difference any either way. Right, let's check out our burly pot. Nice and weighted at the bottom, should hold it in the current. Latch comes off pretty easy. Our rope oh, should come out nice and easy too. There we go. So that's the tie on to the other end of the pot here and we can throw that out and tie it off to one of our rod holders down here. So I'm not going to open the can just yet, I'll wait till I get to the end of the spot because that'll be leaking juice all through the esky. We're going to throw some cat biscuits and some torn up bread in there and we'll chop off some of our fresh mullet heads and throw them in there as well. Anyway that should do the trick, let's get some biscuits in. Here we go. I'm going to rip up some of this bread. Like this. Let's make sure they get it all through the car. Should probably be doing this outside of the car. <laughs> anyway, it's going in there. We will do it outside the car. And stick it on here. Stick it down here. Oh, there's this lid. It's driving me crazy. Okay, it's going to go there. I think there's a bird that wants a little bit of this too. I'm going to see if he wants to eat it. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's for you. All yours. Just take a bit more bread down there. Some biscuits. Be plenty of biscuits right there. We've still got to put a can of cat food and some more bread in there and the mullet heads. That'll do then. Anyway, they can just sit in there until we open it up down on the spot. That's good to go, baby. Look at that. All right, everything we need rods, bait, rod holders, bag, burley. Let's get down here.
get this cat food sorted out. Looks pretty good. Whole prawns, all that. Get it in oh, as solid as possible. That's our delicious frozen bait, as always. Super fresh. That's pretty much it. Quick thrash around in the shallow waters, nice and warm. You can theoretically just pluck them straight off. We're going to put some mullet heads in this container. Any leftovers going straight in the burly pot. Nothing fancy about the frozen bait. little uh, stop off see if we can clip these onto the onto the PVC pipes if not I've got a rubber strap these grunt straps from Bunnings work pretty good you can strap a lot of stuff with these hold it a bit in longer actually I'll put it in the esky and we'll take it out. I'll wash the esky in the water down there. To get the party started on the live bait. I'm going to put these in my pocket. We're going to be good to go. There's our delicious burley. Let's see if we can descend it straight out here somewhere. Switch up the burly pot to this side and let all the stuff run across ways. Let's get this last one out. Got our catch, let's go home. Just kidding, I'm gonna let this guy go. Way too small. Hopefully that takes off. We've got something good. The weather has already turned my friends. I'm supposed to not have any wind until about two o'clock. It is about 10 30. I'll hang on as long as long as I can. Hopefully we can get a catch before then. What am I supposed to do? What can I do there? Alright, soaking wet, very cold, lost a whole container of bait, wasted my burley. Packing the last rod up, I'm gonna go home and have a feed, regather my strength for tomorrow. Hopefully it's not pouring rain then. And round four, baby. We got to, we're working up our fish hours. We're bound to catch a fish at some point.
Clear tomorrow.